Good morning, Bell. That's right. Theresa May is sticking with her strategy of ignoring everything that's going wrong around her and just ploughing on because she had sent Geoffrey Cox, the Attorney General, and Stephen Barclay, the Brexit Secretary, to Brussels to try and get some changes with regards to the Northern Irish backstop, which is a real sticking point for some of her own Conservative MPs and the DUP. Now, those talks ended last night at an impasse. Reports from the European side say that the meetings got pretty uh, lively and that they became very frustrating because really what the UK was asking for was not something that could be delivered. It was a bit of a, a legislative change to a political problem is what they are saying. They wanted to try and come up with some kind of arbitration panel that would deem whether or not uh, the UK might be able to leave the backstop. And that's something that the EU says it's simply not willing to do. So they have now returned to the UK. They've been given 48 hours to come up with another plan and then they can return. And the EU says it will sit over the weekend if that is needed. But really now the ball is in Theresa May's court because she needs to do something pretty big to try and win MPs over. Because at the moment it doesn't sound like they're willing to vote for her deal next week. Here's what she had to say yesterday on this in the House of Commons. This Parliament gave the people of the United Kingdom the decision to choose whether to leave the Euro European Union or to stay in. They chose to leave the European Union. I think it is, I think for trust in politics, it's important that the government delivers on just that. Now, there is some speculation that Theresa May might make a speech uh, before Tuesday's vote or even go to Brussels herself, because the problem that she has now is that her and her team are punkered down in Downing Street with lists of MPs, those that will vote for her deal, those who could be persuaded, those who definitely won't vote. And they're trying to get to the magic number that takes it over the line. But on all the predictions at the moment, it looks like it'll go the same way as when she brought it here in January, because nothing really has changed. We've just got less time. So it looks like the Prime Minister is in for a defeat of some 60 to 100 of her own MPs because she's been able to get anything more that they could see as being uh, useful to stop the UK being trapped in some kind of permanent customs union. And then uh, you've also got uh, exacerbating Theresa May's problems, the fact that the opposition leader, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, is said to be in talks with some backbench Conservative members of Parliament. Uh, what might be behind that initiative? That's right. I think these reports that Jeremy Corbyn is meeting with the likes of Oliver Letwin and Nick Bowles to talk about an alternative Brexit plan, something that's deemed the sort of Norway plus model, is going to please some people. But it's also going to really annoy some within the Labour Party because after the, uh, the Labour Brexit plan was defeated last week, the Labour Party's policy was to shift onto a footing calling for a second referendum and trying to bring that about. But really, so far, it doesn't seem like that's something that Jeremy Corbyn or John John McDonnell, the, uh, his uh, sort of deputy, his, the, the shadow chancellor, are really putting uh, much effort into. There hasn't been any serious moves on that in the past week. They have, of course, got these votes next week. But after it's expected Theresa May's withdrawal agreement is, uh, is, is voted down, then that is what the party should be working towards. But it seems they are still trying to get some kind of Brexit deal, although whether or not the Norway model would fit with the kind of uh, the sort of Brexiteers within their own party still remains to be seen because you wouldn't have control of freedom of movement. So as ever, Bell here in British politics, it is all a bit of a mess and we're still waiting to see what will happen next week in these final few votes.